Welcome to our first week of our book study on the book Creative Counterpart by Linda Dillo. You'll want to get your own copy if you are following along this study and I will put a link in the description below to where you can get this book. This week we're going to study chapters 1 and 2 and if you have started reading along with this you would have read The Honeymoon Disaster and I found the first story very relevant to that whole honeymoon period where everything's going so great and then all of a sudden it's like disaster strikes and nothing is nothing is going smoothly and you're thinking what did I get myself into? What I thought was interesting and on page three she wrote sometimes Prince Charming turns into a toad or Cinderella turns into a nag and the exciting relationship can become a daily drag. And I've always heard that that first year of marriage is a great time. It's called the honeymoon period. But after that first year, you know, we wear off. Our, we, our true colors kind of start to come out. And we don't always say please and thank you. Or maybe our husbands don't open the door for us anymore. And there's just that loss of romance a little bit and like they said sometimes Prince Charming suddenly turns into a toad. At the end of the first chapter Linda Dillo wrote that there are usually three things that causes a woman to be dissatisfied with her marriage. The first would be her husband and of course she's blaming her husband for her problems if he were just more affectionate or more aggressive or more helpful or more anything. I could be the kind of wife I should be. Again, we're blaming our husbands for how we are. Some women don't blame their husbands, but blame their circumstances. If I lived in a bigger house, or if I didn't have such a big house to clean, or if only I had a child, or if I didn't have so many children, of course, if I had more money, I could be a better wife. Again, you're blaming your circumstances, not taking the responsibility. And the last thing is women sometimes blame ourselves. If I was just different, more beautiful, thin, talented, successful, intelligent. As you read these pages in this book, you're going to find suggestions for how to change your life, to become more creative, to love who God has made you, and to become the person that God wants you to be. In chapter two, we start reviewing the Proverbs 31 woman, and she starts out by reminding us how today's society has tried to condition women to believe that being a housewife and housework should be a drudgery and the place for us to be is out in the world and in the workplace and it's not a bad thing to be home. That is where God wants us to be. And the more we see this advertising, the more we're exposed to it, the more we start to think about it and start to believe that and start questioning it. And that starts that slippery slope of being discontent and unhappiness and it's a place that we just cannot go there as women. At the bottom of page five, I like how Linda Dillo wrote that women aren't the only ones who get frustrated with their jobs. Pilots and engineers and everyone gets frustrated with their, with their walk in life currently. But that does not stem from the nature of the word. Rather, it comes from the boredom inevitable in any job done poorly and unimaginatively. A creative counterpart is more than a helper. She is a woman having chosen or having found herself in the vocation of wife and mother decides to learn and grow in all the areas of this role and to work as hard as if she were aiming to be the president of a corporation. Then on page seven you see where she has written out the Proverbs 31 woman I would encourage you to pause this video right now and to go ahead and read that either in Linda Dill's book or dig out your Bible and go ahead and read that right now. There are four sections that Linda Dillo touches on and the first one is on trustworthiness. She wrote on the bottom of page 10, note that this commitment was not for a month or a year but for all the days of her life. Such a statement indicated a decision of her will, not an emotion, to stand by his side forever, regardless of what happens to them. 
Today it seems common to love your husbands and to do him good until problems come. Then it's every person, every person for himself or herself. And I like what she said that this is a will. You have to will yourself to love that person and to stand by that person because if you've been married for any period of time, you know that there are hard times that have happened in your marriage. It's not always going to be a bed of roses. There's going to be difficult things. You're going to have to will yourself to stay with your husband because that is what you believe and that is what God commands us to do. In 1 Corinthians 13 verse 7, it says that love endures all things. The model wife of Proverbs 31 made a commitment to good, do good, to truly love her husband all the days of her life. And that includes all of his bad things, bad points too. She considers every word and action and then said and did only what would build up her husband and help him. Now you want something to work on this week? There you go. That is hard to do. Every word that comes out of your mouth, you think about before you speak and it's only to build him up and to help him. That is a hard rule to live up to. The next heading she covered was being industrious. And I like what she said on page 12. It says, God doesn't say we have to be overjoyed. He says we are to do everything willingly. We are to have a positive attitude because we are doing this job for the people God has given us to love. You know that housework? Maybe the cleaning that dirty toilet or maybe the bathtub. That's my big one. We don't necessarily need to enjoy it, but we need to do it because we love our family. And keeping that mindset will help us to actually have joy in doing our work. We see in the, the Proverbs 31 woman, the willingly, willingness to work with her hands. This verse tells us that it is our attitude that counts, not whether we sew designer clothes or cook gourmet meals, but it's our attitude. How many times do you wake up in the morning and you ask God to help your attitude to be cheerful and happy? I can't say that that's usually first on my list. Usually it's me praying and asking God to please give me the strength to get through another day watching the kids. I don't usually ask for a cheerful spirit and that's something I need to work on. I need to have that cheerful spirit when I'm dealing with my kids that I could reflect what God would have me reflect and not just this kind of, oh, this is another drudgery. This is another thing I need to do today. I need to watch the kids. I got to keep Mary out of you know, getting into the glue or the glitter. It's your attitude that counts, period. The next section that she covers is the organized wife. And on the bottom of page 13, she talks about the Proverbs 31 woman who rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household. This wife knew that if she said good morning to God, her good mornings to everyone else would be that much better. And sometimes that good morning to God is going to be in the sense of a very small devotional. It might be a small prayer to God, talking to God first thing in the morning. Moms, sometimes you don't have a half hour, 45 minutes, or an hour to spare in the morning because when you get up, your little ones get up. But making sure that when you get up, the first thing you do, talk to God and ask him to help you through your day. Then she speaks a little bit about our responsibilities and what happens when people ask us to take on more things. And all I want to say on this point is to prayerfully consider and ask God what he wants you to do and what your responsibility is. If you're a mom with small kids, this may not be the time for you to go out to a woman's ministry once a week or helping the poor. This just Please consider the time of your life and what God would have you set your priorities as. And I can't tell you what your priorities are. Only you and God can figure that out and your husband. The next section she, she talks about is being a loving wife. The virtuous wife was loving in her actions and in her words. She opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. Now just think of this for a moment, what our house and our world would be like if we applied this verse to our life every day. 
Have you ever noticed the intonation difference you have with your family and then with your friends? I noticed a long time ago that whenever the phone rings, what do you do? Hello? It's, you can be having an argument with your husband, you can be having this um, upset conversation with your children. The phone rings and suddenly, just like that, you can turn the switch and you can say, hello? And I've kind of made it a general rule. If I'm having a problem with my kids, I will not answer the phone because I feel like I'm being a hypocrite. I'm presenting one thing to my children and then I'm presenting myself another way to the person on the other end of the phone. Something to think about because we are so easily prone to wanting to save face and always be that nice person to everyone else, but our family, now, we don't treat them quite so nice because we live with them every day. We see their sins every day. Think about that. It's so easy to give our best to comparative strangers and give our family the leftovers. The virtuous wife had so much love, it just didn't stop with her family. She had more to give. Her hands were outstretched to anyone in need. And we read, she extends her hands to the poor. Yes, she reaches her hands out to the needy. And that is just something we need to consider. And that needy may be making a meal for a mom who needs help or maybe donating some of your used clothes to people who are in need. The last section that Linda touches on is our outward appearance. And she writes, true beauty comes from inner strength of character and cannot be bought or applied with expensive creams. This is something that we are going to have to work on. This isn't going to come easy. It's going to be prayerful diligence every day with God, asking him, him to refine us, to make us more beautiful from the inside out. When you read at the end of the Proverbs 31 woman, you see the praise that this woman is given from her children. But notice her children were grown. Her inner qualities did not appear overnight but they were hammered out in the trials of life as she trusted God and obeyed him. So you may ask, how is this virtuous wife so perfect? And how on earth can I ever live up to this standard? The key to her success was the fact that she feared the Lord. If you wanna become this woman, this virtuous woman, the first step is to examine your heart and to see where you stand with God. And I would encourage you to prayerfully consider what we've read today, what you've read in chapter 1 and 2, and to ask God to show you how you can improve and ask him to change your attitudes because this isn't something you're going to be able to do by yourself. You need God's help. Next week, we're going to try to cover chapter 3. I will be trying to post these videos every Friday morning. So please stay tuned for those videos. I will also put the link below in the description for our Facebook discussion group. If you'd like to join that, please do, where we will be discussing this book on a weekly, maybe more daily basis. And I would love to have your input on these videos. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And Lord willing, I will see you next Friday for chapter three. Have a great week, everyone.